Hey everybody, Ben here for the Bono Podcast, and welcome to Blood Bowl Dream Team's Chaos. So this is Chaos Chosen. Now what we're doing is we're going through every team available in Blood Bowl, and we're putting together what they look like at various stages in a league build. So we're looking at 1.25 million, 1.5 million, and 1.75 million, which for most teams is going to be kind of around about two-thirds of the way through their first season, maybe a bit of the way through the second season, and 1750 is probably going into the third season of a team. The whole idea here is to give you kind of an idea what your team could look like at those various points. So, when it comes to Chaos, they're a bit of a blank canvas of a team, so this is going to be a really fun one. If you're going to be playing Chaos in League, or you're in a league where there are Chaos teams and you want to know what you are potentially going to be facing, this video is for you. Okay, so let's start at 12.50. Chaos have a choice of big guys now. You can take a troll, you can take an ogre, or you can take a minotaur. You get to choose. Now, I'm going to stick with the classic build in this one because, well, I love minotaurs. The Ogre is a very good choice as well, though. It's more reliable, but it is less punchy. But the benefit is it costs about the same, and we'll talk through when we level up the Minotaur what kind of skills to give it. We'll talk through what to give the uh, the Ogre as well. The Troll build is, uh, I think, less advantageous. Not a bad thing to have a Troll on the front line. And at 115k, it's a bit of a bargain for a big guy. But at the same point, You've got plenty of strength in a Chaos team. You don't need dumb muscle. If you want to play a roster with dumb muscle, then potentially go and have a look at the Nurgle roster. Chaos has got to be a bit mobile because it's not too slow. And actually, the Minotaur is a cruise missile of a player. And the uh, the Ogre just plays. He can be a big blitzer. He can be a big blocker. He's a good mid-range big guy, essentially. So 1250, we're looking at your roster. Now, whether you started with two Chaos Warriors and a Minotaur or all four Chaos Warriors and no Minotaur, by the 1250 point, this is where I envisage your team to be. This is where I would want my team to be. You've got four Chaos Warriors. You've got seven Beastmen and the big guy there, whether it's the Minotaur or the Ogre. You're looking at 12 players. You've got I've got the Blooming logo in the way, haven't I? You've got three rerolls. Uh, and that is going to be more than enough. Now, you you can start with two. You want to pick up a third. Now, the reason for that is you do not get a lot of skills to start with if you're running a Chaos roster. Not even slightly. Okay, you've got no block. You've got no sure hands. You've got no dodge. You're not... Everything you're doing for the first season is uh, going to be relying on the dice. So having three re-rolls as early as you can is really quite beneficial to the team. Now, there are really good coaches and you can play with two re-rolls and it's fine. But having that third one is going to be really key because it's going to give you the... It's just going to help you take an extra turn. It's going to save you from a silly fumble, from a silly turnover. And that's really important. So we've got these four Chaos Warriors. Chaos Warriors are great. They're reasonably fast, but their agility is very good three plus is really good for a strength four piece that goes unnoticed and you want to be scoring with a chaos warrior whenever you get the chance that said they're not the fastest player the beastman is likely to be the ball carrier because of the way the chaos team develops you want those strength four big lads on the line that's going to mean they level up a little bit slower than you'd imagine they're not blitzers they are very much blockers but they don't come with block, so the first skill is going to be block. And when you're looking at 1250, you are probably looking around about, from a cash point of view, this is this is kind of five to eight games in for your Chaos team. Two of your Chaos Warriors have scored a few casualties, maybe a couple of casualties and a touchdown, maybe a casualty and a random MVP. They're going to be in there. They're going to be fighting, and at strength four, they are going to be getting reliably two die blocks most of the time. Getting that block is going to keep you alive on offense and defense. It makes them great linebackers. Movement 5, strength 4 is going to give you two dice against most targets. Having that block means that if you deploy them on the line, they're going to be a bit safer. If you are running around killing stuff, you're going to be a bit safer. So block is really advantageous for those pieces. It seems a little boring, and it is. But you need consistency, which is very analogous to the fact that this is a chaotic team. 
What can I say? Now, your beastmen are going to be the everymans of this team. Your Chaos Warriors form your core, your blocking core, your big linebackers. They do a superb job. Your D-linemen, they do a great job. Now you've got these beastmen. And the cool thing about beastmen is they get access to basically everything. They are the blank canvas of players. They are so good at doing whatever you want them to do as a ball carrier. They can be strength four when they need to blitz out. They've got the ability to take general skills. They can build up nicely. They've got mutations there to give them that extra advantage. They can make great blitzers too because they've got that horns ability, which means that when they blitz, they get strength four too. So on this roster, you've got the Minotaur, four Chaos Warriors. Now, you might want to blitz with your Minotaur given the opportunity, but you may have deployed your Minotaur on the line with those Chaos Warriors. So actually your Minotaur can just block. You're going to be blitzing with a with a beast man which is going to give you six strength four players strength four or five players and that gives you another two die block so as we develop the beastman i'm going to give you some advice and i'm going to talk through how i developed my chaos teams and how i would want to going forward they develop roles but this is the point where i talk about random skills chaos what we're doing here is i'm giving you my view of how to consistently develop a team to be really good if you want to score a touchdown with a beast man, choose general, mutation, whatever, strength, whatever, and take a random, do it. It will be great fun. Chaos will either reward you or penalize you, and you will develop faster. And you are genuinely just putting your fate in the Chaos Gods, okay? You can go do it. It is great fun, and it's a really good way to build up your team. After that first game, you might have a couple of touchdowns. You might have a couple of casualties and an MVP. That's random, 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 random. You can jump up and have some cool skills. You can also have some garbage skills, so bear that in mind. Now, what we're going to do here is kind of lead you in a direction of how you can set up your beastmen with skill sets to be specific role players on your team. One beastman gets sure hands. One beastman gets tackle. One beastman gets two heads. Two heads is a mutation skill that gives you plus one to dodging forever. These guys are edge three plus. That guy is now edge two plus to dodge around. Movement six, strength four on the blitz. That means you can redeploy that piece and that is going to be so useful. He is not there to be the ultimate scoring threat, but he is there to be able to reposition to give you a solid two die block somewhere else. Having a dude that can just hover, if they get marked, you can bounce away on a 2+. plus. You've got three rerolls down here so that you can keep him alive and keep him mobile. That two heads gives you a reliable reserve piece. But also, if he's got the ball, that 2+, plus into the open field dodge is going to absolutely change the game. Now, when it comes to sure hands, you may be thinking, I could take extra arms, and that just means I'm picking up the ball on a 2+. plus. Definitely. You are completely right. Technically, sure hands on a 3 plus is better than extra arms and picking it up on a 2 plus because you get that 3 plus plus versus a 2 plus flat. You've got rerolls. It is your choice to make. I recommend sure hands. Not only does it give you that reroll for that one, which is going to save the rest of your rolls, but also it's going to protect you against strip ball as you develop, as you go forward. And it's a really great starting place kind of identifies him as your primary ball carrier he's going to be the dude in the backfield who waits and gathers the ball last activation of your team turn is going to be him rolling up rolling a two rolling another two and ending your turn but at least it hasn't cost you a team reroll. this guy with tackle is going to be your primary sweeper okay he's going to be your safety and you are going to need him in most leagues most teams are going to end up developing a dodge player quite early on even something like nobility they're going to end up with a blitzer with dodge you're going to have a bunch of teams out there with an opportunity to use tackle on a strength two player every team i can think of skinks black orcs uh skaven gutter runners there this it, this is a target rich environment and having tackle on a strength four player means that he's going to have a great opportunity to even take out war dancers so you've got him as your safety you've got these as your d-line and your linebackers you've got the minor tool there to be the cruise missile who's just going to run around stomping around murdering stuff and you've got two heads guy to be your mobile reserve you're building these guys to be those role players we've got a sweeper we've got a middleman and we've got a ball carrier along with a core of really solid blockers and then as your team develops to 1500 chaos really start to get humming so let's start with the chaos warriors uh we've got 
four of them and they've all got some levels now so they are starting to be a little bit more useful we've gone with block on all four i know it's boring i know it's not very exciting but it is just going to be the most overall useful thing it's going to help you maintain your reroll so that you can go and do the things you really need to do but more importantly and we've done a theory thursday on this it's going to help you continue to stay alive and generate casualties to get you to that next level up and that, that next level up you want to split 50 50 between guard and mighty blow it's really basic um kind of a blocker development strategy but it is really solid so chaos warriors can be really good scoring threats and there is a lot of people out there who will say actually develop one to be your ball carrier totally do that but i do believe the block is the right thing to, to start off with three plus is really good so having one getting sure hands or getting something like that to be your ball carrier is a cool way to do it but there's going to be times where you just wish that they had block and those guys are going to be fighting most of the time so that block is really useful now guard you may think well i've got strength four everywhere do i need guard your guard at this point is just going to help you win against others guard and also it means that you've got a minotaur with a cheeky bit of guard can actually probably two die block most targets without blitzing that saves your blitz for one of these guys here to be strength full blitzing it just also takes one of your chaos warriors and makes them strength five then you've got the minor at strength five and you've got a chaos warrior at strength five because you've got guard and it's just a really good combination mighty blow on the other 50 percent is going to mean that they can start working in tandem to delete players the minotaur is going to start it off chaos warriors starting to build up that guard block mighty blow spam it turns it into a bit of a Death Star front line, and that's exactly where you want to be. Now, uh, let's do the Beastmen. So our role players are starting to develop a little bit more. As the roster stands, we've still got four Warriors, we've still got seven Beastmen, we've still got that Minotaur. We have picked up an Apothecary by this point to keep some of our level-ups um, juicing along. Quite a useful thing to do. It's probably one of the first things you want to do after you get to 1200, maybe by game four or five. When you buy the more minor tour, you really want to start thinking, I need the apothecary because they're all quite expensive. But we've got some extra level up on our beastmen. They do level up quite nicely. Those strength four blocks means you've got a good shot at the odd casualty, and they're fast enough and agile enough to get decent amounts of touchdowns. So the sure hands dude has now picked up extra arms. We talked about it in the last segment. Whether you want a 3++ plus plus or a 2++ plus is down to you. You can do it in whichever order you like. I like sure hands because it gives you that protection and statistically it is better. But by this point, it doesn't matter. Now he's 2++ plus with a reroll all of the time. You can pretty much rely on that guy in the backfield to pick up the ball. Even in the rain, even in the tackle zone, he's good to go. Now another skill you can give him is big hand which ignores all modifiers. I think it is statistically less advantageous in most scenarios than having the combination of extra arms and sure hands. Um, it's good if it's in a load of tackle zones. And if you've played Fumble Secret League, there is a Zinch team where the Zangors have big hands and it's an awesome skill. But in most of the time, you've got a strong enough front that there's not going to be too much pressure on the ball in your backfield. So you're going to be OK for that. And because you are going to be in a pretty strong situation that if you pop the ball out, you're going to have some meat and some muscle around it. You don't need to make that roll. You can make your opponent try and clear your players out and then let them burn the dice um, because you're going to be in contact and you're going to be able to deploy your strength to clear it out and then remove tackle zones. And actually with a two plus and a reroll, two tackle zones is still a 75% chance of picking up that ball without burning a team reroll. I'm okay with that. Right, so that's Ball Carrier Man. Now we've got Mr. Safety. Tackle to just delete gutter runners, and then you put block on there as well. Now, I've asterisked block because there is an alternative that you can take, and it depends on your meta. Him getting block and tackle gives you essentially a blitzer. You can swap that out and take wrestle and make a pure safety, okay? Tackle, wrestle will rock paper scissors blodge so if your environment is uh, blodge heavy then you can go with that block however means that if he receives the ball he is going to stay on his feet more so you've got that thing of actually do i want my blitzer to be a ball carrier or do i want my blitzer to be focused entirely on turning over my opponent and dragging them to the ground you go with wrestle what's going to happen is you're either going to blat them or drag them down with you 
if you've got the ball, much less useful. If you're planning on him being a secondary ball carrier, then taking block is a great skill because it means that you've got block and tackle, means that you can go along and punch down most dudes, but it also means you're going to stay on your feet unless they have a wrestle. That's the fun bit of rock, paper, scissors when it comes to advanced Blood Bowl team design. I'm so happy. Right, and then we've got the two heads dude. Now, this two heads dude's whole mission is to give you a sneaky two plus open field scoring threat, but also to be able to redeploy where you need him to. If your opponent marks him, actually, he can step away on a two plus. It's a really, really, really useful skill. And it's even better when you give him block because now you've got a set of two blitzers to be there in your midfield to protect and also to help create holes because strength four block is a brilliant combination. And two heads means he's going to be... You've just built a Dark Elf Blitzer, right? basically, at this point, that's his role. He's a little bit slower, but that's what he's doing. He's a little bit stronger. There are, yeah, I like that. That's cool. And again, the Wrestle Conundrum is advanced here as well. Do I want two block dudes? Yeah, block is never bad. Block is just never bad. But like I said, read your meta. If there's a lot of block out there already, take Wrestle. If there's not a lot of block out there, take block. It's going to be advantageous. It forces them to burn another skill to get that block to keep equals with you. And um, So great combinations. This guy is the mobile reserve. This guy is your primary safety. This guy is your primary ball carrier. But every beast man and every chaos warrior is a pretty adept ball carrier. They're going to get stuck in there a little bit. They're going to get stuck. But Shohan's extra arm is going to be pretty reliable. Um, extra arm is going to give you plus one to receive the ball as well so it's going to be a two plus handoff two heads is going to give you that two plus open field and when you've got block any two die block is a very tasty block and the best way to keep it a two die block is to develop your beastman to support so beastmen have general mutation and strength chucking guard on the beastman is a great way to keep your other beastman mighty now you can blitz at strength four so most of the time you're going to be two dying but having movement six guard pieces is going to be brilliant and as you develop your team your opponent's teams are also going to develop they're going to start getting some guard they're going to start getting some hard hitters that guard beastman with armor nine plus and strength three is a solid piece you should be able to keep him in the fight to mean that this guy and 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 this guy can still be stronger than your opponent really useful now we talked about random skills and this is probably the point at which actually you can take some punts guard is great is the most consistent way to do it you can also go block obviously kick is okay it's not primarily what i'd go for on a chaos team but if you roll it as a random it's a pretty good place to be block is good wrestle is good tackle is good kick is good pro is good sure hands is good this is the point at which actually you can start taking punts because it's going to be 3 SPP, 10k, and you are going to just develop another role player for your team. Minotaur is going to be blitzing. You can take Juggernaut, you can take Guard, you can take uh, Brawler if you think he's going to be stuck in. Jugs works brilliantly for a Strength 6 Blitzer. You want him to be blitzing. And generating that both down into a push means that you get to go very, very frequently from a two die block into a four die block or a three die block into a six die block because you've got that frenzy ability. The more dice you throw with the Minotaur, the more chance you get to use that mighty blow to delete whatever it's targeting. Apothecary keeps your dudes alive. Three rerolls is more than enough. As you develop your team up, you're going to be able to pull off some shenanigans with your plays and it's going to help keep you from doing dodgy turnovers. And as you move your team forward, this is where it gets very much down to you. Now, this is a great setup for the Chaos Warriors. So we've not added any other players. We've got 12 players. They're good, solid players. You don't normally need much more. The Apothecary is keeping your guys going. Your three rerolls is keeping your turns going. Block, Mighty Blow, Guard, times four on your Chaos Warriors is going to give you the best and most consistent front. We've talked through other great skills. Now, if you're in a high armor environment, you can replace the bit of that Mighty Blow with Claw instead. They don't stack anymore, and a mix might be quite good. But again, read your meta. In a unknown meta, this is the best way to do it. Guard is going to mean that you've got those pieces to solve. Your opponent's strength, Mighty Blow, is going to be just as useful on big guys as it is on little guys. If you are playing on a Dwarf, Chaos Dwarf, um, Chaos, Black Orc meta with lizards as well then yeah start going with claw instead because essentially it turns it into mighty blow plus two against their big dudes and that's really really good so mix that in and again like i said you can potentially take some punts with your chaos warriors once they've got block you could just go the route of a random this a random that 
Uh, it seems a waste. You've only got four and they are quite expensive. It is a bit boring. And it's a chaos team. So you can start chucking random mutations, random strength skills, random blocking and general skills. Can be great fun, but this is a really consistent way to do it. I've not developed the Beastman any further. I've not developed the Minotaur any further. Because this is the point at which the Chaos team falls into your own franchise. The Chaos Warriors form that consistent block. Your big guy, whether it is an Ogre and he's taking Brawler instead of Juggernaut or Break Tackle to give him a 3 plus movement out there or just a reliable Strength 5 guard piece. This is the point at which Chaos becomes its own team. There is no blueprint because these are so malleable and you can flex them based on your environment. If you're in a Norse heavy environment, a Dwarf heavy environment, these guys get block or they get wrestle to trumpet or they get claw to ignore your opponent's armor. If you're in a stunty rich environment, you spam tackle on this. If you're in a guard heavy environment, you spam guard. You've got so much flexibility. Generally speaking, you want a ball carrier, you want a safety and you want a blitzer. After that, that's three of your seven beastmen, you can let the dice decide. You can adjust them for your league. This is the great thing about Chaos, and it takes a while to get there, but the team you end up with will be your own. The Chaos Warriors have definitely got a blueprint. Your big guys will develop in very much the similar way. The correct thing to do is to save up 12 SPP and get block, but who has time for that? Block is the correct answer, but, you know, as we talked about up here, it's not the most exciting thing. But this is the bit at which the linemen come to life here. The random skills are great. Blitzer, ball carrier, safety, four blockers, the big guy, everybody else is yours. And your dices, okay? Take a few punts on random skills, they'll start to develop their own character. Now this is a great thing about the Chaos team, it's underrated. It is significantly overshadowed by Chaos Renegades who start with basically role players, but you've got seven blank canvases. And they can be some of the best players in the game because they've got that angle. If you want a bunch of Mighty Blow Block Claw dudes, you go do it. It isn't going to take long. You've got mutations to really, really, really capitalise on those roles. You can build a heck of a team here with Chaos and it's so much fun. But this is a core start. Let the dice decide the rest. Let your league decide the rest. And that gives you so much of an advantage. I love it. I love Chaos. It takes a little while to get them going. But when they do, they are your team almost unlike any other. And that is just significantly underrated. Anyway, let me know what you think of Chaos. Chuck in the chat if you've got some great skill combos, what's worked well on your Chaos team. Let's use these videos as kind of a hub for people to be like, oh, I want to run a Chaos team. Oh, there's some great tips and tricks. Great place to do it. Thank you so much for all your support. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up. Thank you very much for watching. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to help support the channel even further, please like and subscribe or come join us on our Patreon. We have early access to content. We get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can. Or you can get yourself some Bonehead Podcast merch on our Spreadshirt site. So if you want to support a team, especially for the Bonehead Championship, you can pick up a shirt, a mug, things like that. It all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. Anyway, links below. Thank you very much. Happy blocking.